and um, with a lot of help from people that love me, and um, I managed to let go of those those addictions and let mm. go of those um, that situation. And when I came out the other side, I knew that that the God that had helped me could definitely do it for anybody else. But could do it for me because it wasn't all that good a situation. Mm -hmm. And um, so I I just kind of in my own way I prayed, what can I do? You show me something to do, and I'll do it. You know, let me give back. Let me let me try to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, about a, less than a week later, I had had a small nap in the afternoon before the show, and I woke up with the name Street Reach on mm. my mind. Mm. And um, as was uh, often the case, I went to the K&W for dinner. And yes, I, yeah, yes, you and, and me I, both. And, yeah. Well, man, you, know, you can't beat it. And I took a piece of a notebook and a pencil, and I got in line at the K&W. And, you know, we're going through there, you're walking past the fruit and stuff. like. And I, and I write Street Reach at the top, and I start writing. What, it, what it's going to be or right. what I'd like to, to be. And um, those guys knew me really well there because I visited off. Yeah, this was in the 20th Avenue South location. Actually, it, it, it may have been yeah, part of the, the Merle's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, um, and uh, so I get to the end of the line and I have no tray, <laughs> no silverware, no food. Oh, you're I've been writing yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. time. Sure. No and uh, the girl at the end, I think her name was Sarah, she said, Rocky, you're not very hungry today, are you? And uh, I looked down and I had nothing. But uh, but basically the whole the whole thing. You laid that, out it was three a mission right there. I wanted drug addiction to be, you know, um, a, a, a facility to to put people onto other um, facilities, kind of coordinate the efforts. And it really wasn't a homeless shelter at the, in its inception. Right, right. And um, so uh, after I got done writing it, I was downtown a few days later and noticed that uh, what had formerly been McFadden's music was empty. The building was empty. They had moved to a new building. Right. I, looked at it I thought well, this is a great place to do something and up until that point we, the only thing I'd really done is we would bag up a bunch of groceries put them in a truck um, take a generator and a small PA system and go find a low income neighborhood maybe apartment complex set up out on the tennis court or what used to be a tennis court or, mm -hmm. or, or a basketball court outside start playing music draw a crowd mm -hmm. they'd come see what was up pass out all the groceries and share the gospel that's and uh, that's kind of... I mean, that was a great first uh, way. It was a great yeah. way to get started. And I thought, well, this is fun. But, but I had a garage full of bagged groceries. And it was, you know, I would drive into the, some of the more, um, uh, some of the areas of town where, where a lot of the guys were hanging. And uh, just take my truck and say, look, I got this building. I don't have much there. You want a cup of coffee? Get in a truck. Let's go over here and talk about what's up, you know. And um, it was just like that. And then suddenly... Somebody, I remember one of the guys said, Rocky, you know, we really appreciate a cup of coffee. We really appreciate the love and, the, and uh, a place to, to get out of the heat or get out of the cold. But what about a place to stay? Mm -hmm. And I said, what do you mean? And, well, there's a lot of homeless people here. And I said, where? I, I didn't know, like yeah. most people, yeah, that we sure. even had a homeless pop. And they took me on a little tour. Back then there were a lot more woods around. Mm -hmm. And um, I visited for several hours. Many cardboard boxes, and, mm, rocky, and they took me to places where nobody gets really gets to go very often. Uh, that and, they, and it was very um, transient places. They would it'd be like a little cardboard community that would move from one set of woods to another. Mm. I think the thing that really that really turned it for me was one of the guys showed up for his cup of coffee one day with a broken arm, and um, I asked him what happened. And he said he fell asleep in the dumpster and got dumped out of it, mm. and uh, mm. and it broke his arm. And uh, I said, well, all right, let me see what I can do here about this. And so I went next door to the courthouse. And uh, I said, I'd like to have home. I would like to sleep people in that building. How about that? And he said, no, nah, well, Rocky, you know, it's got to be zoned the right way. Da, 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 da. Let me get back to you. The next day, the lady calls me and says, you're not going to believe this, but that place is actually zoned exactly for that. Wow. There was upstairs apartments right. that we didn't even give any consideration really to. and But it put us in the zone. And... Um, so I said, all right, I want to do it. And so we started taking people in and beds and getting stuff together. Yeah, someone owned the building. I mean, how did you... Uh... I went to her. I went, <laughs> she, she's amazing. I went to her. I said, uh, I want, your building's a mess, because it was. It was just a mess. I mean, you know, the ceiling was all falling out, wiring, paint. It was just a mess. And I said, it's a mess. Give it to me for three months for free, and I'll straighten it up. And if I can't 
start making a lease payment after that, you can have it back and it'll be twice the condition that it is now. Right. And she went for it. Yeah. And that was 10 years ago. Wow. And to, to that building, we were in for a long, long time, maybe five or more years. And then, then they moved over to the building they're in now. Right. Um, a little better, a little bigger, oh, yeah. a little easier. But now... They just oh, yeah. broke ground on That's the big, right. on the That's finally right. on the You've got to be the thrilled. One. Oh, it's just amazing. I, I'm, so, I'm really proud. You know, um, I think it just kind of shows what you can do with just a little. Just, so just you, you and Kimberly were putting together, or you were really helping launch a street reach back. Uh, this was actually I did it yeah. by myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jimmy Morris, uh, uh, um, pretty well known. Um, evangelist right. from around here that does a ton of work in Romania. Uh -huh. He spends a lot of time in Romania on sure. mission work. Jimmy was around and uh, basically it was just a couple of us, right, you know, right. and, and mostly just me. But you were doing this while uh, you were making, uh, we've only got a few minutes, so that's why I want to make sure we we knock out some of these other types um, of things, but you were doing this while you were headlining there at Carolina Opry yes. and doing so much. How'd I would you do it all? I, I would get up in the morning, go to the mission, spend the day in the mission doing whatever I could, whatever we needed to be do, done. Go, go to rehearsal or work at the Opry, and then come back, and many nights I stayed there. Uh, you know, uh, first secured, you know, we had how to sec keep it secure and safe right. and all sure. that. Well, sure. the only way I knew was for me to be there. And, yes. and, and eventually, um, when we proved ourselves as a worthwhile ministry right. um, th that, that could actually make a difference, um, eventually people came on board That's and tremendous. support. Golly, support you rock you. Isn't it neat? Oh, yeah, it is. It is. It's Libby Faulkner was with beach. us a couple of weeks ago at South Carolina Bank and Trust down in Myrtle's Inlet. She was filming with us and hearing her talk about uh, the excitement to see, and of course, herself, who oh. hit such a tough uh, point when her parents uh, mm -hmm. left and mm -hmm. left her stranded. It was terrible. She can relate. Libby, she, Libby yeah. can relate. Um, I met Libby online. Did she mention that? She did. She shared with us the story this about how you all early, and you brought early online things. Yeah. You know, uh, she, she had lost her son, and right. I had. Uh, had the opportunity to just try to minister to her, you know. So right, right. Uh, and and then she moved out here and has and uh, has just been an angel. She's done an amazing an job. Angel. Yeah, really has. We got three minutes, Rocky. Awesome. You know, folks are thinking about where uh, where where can I get Rocky? I've been I saw him for 17 years. I came out to Carolina Opry annually or every other week or right, quarterly. Right. Where can I find him now? I mean, they can surely go online, see the Absolutely. schedule for performances at RockyFrets.com, but are there any other places they can see you now? There is. You know, um, we started the Carolina Opry May 2nd, 1986. I retired in 2003, but it's the 20th anniversary right. of the, of the right. Opry. And yeah. so in celebration of that, for the last few months and for the next couple of months, I actually play a 45-minute pre-show concert in the lobby of the Carolina Opry. In the lobby. In celebration right. of the 20th anniversary. Okay. I'm not in the show, right. but I play in the lobby for 45 minutes before most every show, unless I'm in another concert. Sure. And uh, that's a great place to get a little dash of me and the, the big oh, yeah. show. Right. And then, of course, um, Brook Green Gardens and um, uh, whatever else is listed on that Oh, calendar. yeah, there's a lot on that. Um, Brook Green, that kickoff is June 22nd for the uh, cool summer evenings concert. Yes, yes that'll be fun. That'll be, that. that's probably one of the best times to come. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best times. That is, come. that is. So if a viewer wanted to come see you, they need to, uh, I mean, a lot of folks can just pop by then, the, the Carolina Opry. Yeah, uh, yeah, you make your plans. Show. If, you want, if you want to see me um, and you intend to go to the Opry anyway, or Good Vibrations, their other show, right. just look on my website at the calendar and you'll see that I keep it, which, yes. which nights I'm going to be there. Yes. And that's most of, most of them. Yeah, absolutely. I really enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. I'm all by myself. It's kind of like close hand magic. Right. Instead right. of instead of a big, you know, a magic show, it's like you're right there next to me and you get to see it all happen. How so exciting. Do you have a favorite song, Rocky? Anything that you love to perform or is it You is know, it Phantom of the Opera right. holds a dear place in my heart because yeah. we produce that so many different great ways. And uh, and every time I get to play it, it, it brings back all the memories of the, of the many, um, uh, thankfully, very many uh, standing ovations right. that the piece of, oh, yeah. you know, happened and uh, so I still get a kick out of playing that piece even solo even right. it's much more it's fun. Rocky I think I saw you uh, there's a desire to get on Oprah what could viewers yes, do I now to help Oprah. make that happen that we just got a second yeah yeah just um, uh, Oprah's website is very accessible just go to Oprah.com and go um, uh, maybe sign up for her uh, inspirational things right. that they send to your mailbox and stuff and there's a, um, a place to submit you know what, what you want to say who's a good one to 
Uh, get on air. That's right. And so just tell them you want Rocky to be on Oprah. I just want to play for her. I love I just, it. I really yeah. want to play she for her. She would dig that. That'd She's be nuts. She's something else. I, you know, I just really like her show, and I like her contribution to, to everything. And I, I'd like to support that school that she has uh, opened in, in South That's Africa. right. And so, any, you know, I just want to be up in all of it. I want music. I want people to understand how powerful a tool music is, not to leave it out of their daily lives. And uh, so if I can get out there and play for people and spread that inspirational message, that's what I want to do. Those are great words, Rocky. Thanks so much for being Good with us you, this Greg. morning. Absolutely. Bless your heart. Stay tuned to more Carolina people with Rocky Friends coming up next. I love that Bill Overs quote, Rocky never takes from an audience he gives. That's why they love him so much. Rocky never takes from an audience. He really gives. He's making a difference. He's giving. I can't remember the last time I had a guest on that talked comfortably about his wife and knowing about his paramour and feeling comfortable with it, hearing him talk about Esmeralda, his seven-and-a-half-foot baby grand, and knowing that his wife Kimberly is comfortable with her. It's a great thing hearing him talk about that. It's amazing you know, when you think about a performer in his, his or her life and the differences they're making. Rocky made, a, made an effort to make a difference. He found out there was a real need. There was a recognition of both folks who had a crippling... Uh, disabilities because they were crippled with addictions, but he also recognized a need to fill the homeless gap, founding street reach, making a difference in every day, and now amazing folks like Libby Faulkner and otherwise taking the baton and carrying it forward. Rocky's still behind the scenes making a difference. You can check him out online at rockyfretz.com. That's Rocky, F-R-E-T-Z, dot com. Go there. Look at the amazing schedule of performances coming up at Brook Green Gardens, or of course you can get out to Carolina Opry and see him there in the lobby performing. Maybe not with Esmeralda, but you can track him down with Esmeralda another time. Take a look at his website.